you have to check in with yourself. Um, the, the, the problem with not checking with yourself is very often you start thinking the problem is out there or the difficulties are out there or the, the strain and the strife comes from out there. Yeah. No such. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Working Smart and Living Well with myself. I am excited to introduce you guys to my guest today, Dr. Mpume Zenda, synonymously known as Dr. Gaini. We actually met for the first time at uh, an Agenda Woman event yes. in 2019. I'd heard a lot about you already at the time because uh, my doctor had told me about you. Yeah. And I remember um, the things that stuck out for me when I met you is your enthusiasm mm -hmm. and your eagerness. And it feels like such a long time ago now. <laughs> it feels like a completely different lifestyle, lifetime. And um, I cannot believe what has happened. I know, hey? The determination, the focus, the intentionality, and what it has produced. How, are you, how, do, how, how does it feel to be you now versus then? <laughs> Not very, not very different. I think, I think firstly, hi, gorgeous. Thank you look you. absolutely <laughs> thank you. stunning. Thank you. Um, and, and, and thank you very much for having me. So, yeah, 2019, a lot was happening. Um, one of the things that I remember very clearly in my head, I remember being on a particular radio show and saying to myself, if the foundations are not right, Whatever that you get, whatever opportunity that comes your way, you cannot secure it. You cannot house it. Yeah. And so I remember specifically that year, I think later on that year, I, I cut out all radio interviews, everything. I said, I wanted to go and do my sexology fellowship mm. um, in Europe. I did that. I wanted to just focus on growing and establishing the practice because every time people would call and say, oh, but where can we find you? I was like, mm. there is my money. Just yeah. disappearing. And I think those are some of the things um, somebody said to me, passion without a good plan is just, it, it becomes wasted. That's and, powerful. And, and, and after a while, it actually, you start being bitter because you love what you do. I really, really love what I do. But it's also important for me to, it was important to put the foundations um, and, and, and also be able to see what I'm doing grow. Otherwise, you're just passionate, 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 and you run out of steam. So I, I love that growth as well that allowed me to, as exciting as my life was at that time, sort of like all these new things that are happening. I said, but if it's going to go well, I need to put the roots deep yeah. and deep. Yeah. Yeah. So out of everything that you have done from 2019 when I met you till today, what are you most proud of? I must say, funny enough, two things. The one is very academic and it was going to do the sexology fellowship in Europe. Um, that was a very lonely time. I was studying over December whilst mm. I was working um, and, 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 and it was lonely in Europe when I was there studying. Um, but I remember your doctor, my mother. Yes. <laughs> yes. She would always just be like, so encouraging, just go, go and study, get this, um, and then come back and work. And, and, and so that was quite, um, taxing also, you know, you kind of pay for yourself and stuff. Mm. It's not like you've got some you know, trust fund, you know, that's sponsoring this. So, so for me, that was a proud moment and, and, and more so the ability to follow through because those are the difficult things. Yeah. It's, it's to stick it out and follow through and the back and forth. Um, I think the second most proudest thing is, is actually more of a soft skill and it is a little bit more patience with myself. Oh. Um, and, and just I love saying that. everything will happen. Everything is beautiful in its, in its season. Um, as long as I am doing the next best thing, as Oprah would say, the next right step. Yeah. Um, at least, and, and when, when in doubt, when I don't know, I, I do nothing. Yeah. That I, I've, I've, and so to be able to give myself that, it, it, it allows me to enjoy whatever space that I'm in, whether it's things are really happening and popping 
or whether things are just quiet and I'm sort of like, I have no idea because that's also a reality yeah. of going through the journey. It's so yeah. funny you mentioned that I actually came across a video, um, a very popular guy on Instagram right now. I mm. think his uh, platform is called The Shift. And uh, I saw him on Instagram and I went and I found him on YouTube and yeah. I listened to his videos a lot because I absolutely enjoy the way that he thinks through life experiences. Mm. And one of the things that he says is, you need to be really careful about who you are when you're in the valley when you're in your downtime. Yes. That says a lot about your commitment to the work that needs to be done, but also your commitment to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I really love that you're doing work that is about self. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the most powerful things when you do this kind of work is how much you discover about yourself. Oh, yeah. How much you discover oh. and learn about who you are. Yeah. When I think about, you know, the landscape of particularly medicine and education, like yeah. health education, there aren't a lot of people who have <laughs> the courage to go into sexology and conversations around yeah. sexuality. What was the thing about your life, how you were raised even maybe, yeah. that um, created not only curiosity around the conversation, yeah. but comfort in, in, in pursuing these conversations? Yeah, I, I must say comfort came very late, mm. like much, much later. It, it was the curiosity, but also the need. I, I couldn't help when we, I remember we were busy studying for our final exams, um, specializing in, in obstetrics and gynae, and realizing literally there is just a blip in terms of sexuality, let alone pleasure. Mm. Um, but not only that, I, I had my own turmoils. As, as, as a black girl, as a, as a black girl who grew up rural, then went to study medicine, and I was trying to make sense of the world. I was trying to make sense. I grew up with a very protective dad. Yeah. So I kind of assumed that all men are like my father. They're going to protect and, you. Yeah, until I was slapped sideways. You know, I'm like, no, the world is not quite like that. Um, but, but one of the biggest things was... I didn't want to live my life afraid. Yeah. I didn't want to live my life afraid. So the curiosity meant that I was like, I'm going to take one for the girls. Yeah. I, I'm jumping in. Um, but also for me, it was just so important to be able to, whatever I have learned, can it help someone else? Can it make someone else's sex life more orgasmic? Can it, can it, can it also be like this load off our bags of just, constant difficulty, even I mean, in the bedrooms, for a lot of women, it's just difficult. It's about the other person. Yeah. It's never about us. It's never about, it never, it, often it doesn't even come from a place of understanding ourselves. Yeah. And so we, we are kind of victimizing ourselves and being traumatized throughout. I was like, I can't do it. Mm. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to live in fear. I'm not going to live in not enough. And if, if God has given me a beautiful brain, God damn, let's, let's, let's put it to it. good use. Let's definitely use it. <laughs> yeah. I am always thrilled when I meet um, women who are passionate about uh, women. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. You know, the, the name of my business is, I don't want to call it a burden, but it's heavy. You know, yes. when people hear agenda woman, the expectations are insane. Yeah. And I always, you know, explain to people that, the woman agenda is so broad. It is not going to be resolved by one organization or one person. And I really appreciate your passion for women in the space that you are, yeah. you are, you know, thriving in and excelling in. One of the things that I think our conversations anchored for me in navigating my own femininity and my own womanhood was um, it's so basic, but it's so powerful. Yeah. You know, you speak a lot outside of uh, topics around sexology. You speak a lot about the female cycle, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, it's not the first time that we're speaking. We spoke in 2020 yes. Yes. when I did the, the summit digitally. And when we kind of explored this topic, you brought up a book that had impacted the way that you saw um, women in the world and particularly in the workplace. Yes. We have a lot of our audience being working women yes. and we try as much as we can to bring forth topics that can help them work smart and live well. And live well yes. So when I think about how transformative 
that conversation around the, the female cycle was for me, I thought it was so important for me to bring it forth in these conversations. So I'm going to start with the impact that that book had on you because yeah. it contextualizes really how we need to think about the feminine cycle and engage with it as men and women. Yeah, that, that book for me, uh, written by, I think it was Simone de Beauvoir, um, it, it, it made me think somebody has actually thought about all the questions I've had growing up. Mm. Um, and, and I think more so it was quite evident at medical school, we are predominantly trained by men. Um, wow. The rules are around, you know, the, the male side of things. Um, and, and reading that book and realizing even medical uh, history, um, women at some point were not allowed to be doctors. Yeah. You know, we could be nurses, but not allowed to be doctors. Um, but, but more so, the male body was the the prototype it was like study this and then copy and then paste. you know the body you, you know mm. um and and i just couldn't help being at medical school realizing no man we are very different yeah um in in fact i often say men are a little bit more linear in the way that their you know your, their hormonal drive is um if, if i think of testosterone they get a shot in the morning. That's why they have the morning glory. But predominantly for the most part of their lives, they've got 10 times more testosterone than we do. Um, and they go through that. Yes, it will decline over the years as they get older and depending on their lifestyle choices. But for a woman, literally, you are a different woman probably every single day. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know? That's and, true. Yeah. And, and, and I think also what was really bothersome is why was there so much negativity around our femininity? Why do so many women hate their periods? Why do so many women um, uh, um, despise even looking at their reproductive and their genitals? Mm. Um, why do we, a, a lot of us are quite shy about our bodies. Um, I, I, I will even joke and say, until I see a man wearing a bra on his scrotum, leave me alone. Yeah. I'm not wearing underwear. Leave yeah. me alone. You know? yeah. um, but, but we are so uncomfortable with our bodies to a point where you have no idea how many women like will not go to the bathroom they will hold you know their pee throughout the day at the office they will not eat well um when they will struggle through the day with period pains um because maybe there are no policies in the workplace for that kind of thing um i, I remember a guy in particular saying to me i was pregnant um, and I was coming into the shift to cut a Caesar, to cut Caesars in the afternoon um, for the evening shift. And he looked at me and he said, ha, huh, are you coming to cut? I'm like, yes. And he was like, mm, people must use contraceptives. I thought that was one of the most demeaning thing to assume that just because I am pregnant, I cannot work and that you need to give me some kind of a lecture about you know, uh, birth control. And, and it made me realize our workspaces are still not for us. Yeah. They're not comfortable. They're not comfortable for the woman who is menopausing and has hot flushes and everybody keeps saying, switch off the air con. Yeah. And I'm just like, but if people don't know and don't understand who we are and how we go through things month to month, mm. it, it's, we are constantly begging for space. We're yeah. constantly begging for comfort. Yeah. And, 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 I, and, I, and I like to explain these things so that we, wherever every woman is, can, can find their way of shift shaping and saying, I'm going to work with me, not against me. And they can find me. the words, right? Yeah. Because I think one of the most powerful things that uh, I recognize can shift the world is understanding how to articulate where we are and how we feel yes. in the different spaces that we find ourselves in. I want to backtrack a little bit. For anyone, you'd be surprised, for anyone who does not understand how the female cycle works, yeah when you're ovulating, when you're in your period, yeah. what happens before that and the cycles and the days. Because that information for me, and you are one of those people, you are the person actually that encouraged me to download the app called Flow. Yes. I live by it. <laughs> At any point where I'm feeling 
um, you know, different, whether I'm feeling moody or I wake up in the morning and I just can't articulate, you know, what's, what, going, what's on? going on with yeah. me, you know. I quickly go to my app and when I recognize where I am in my cycle, then I can right. understand, uh, oh, okay, yes. I'm five days away from my period, which means I'm, I'm, I'm in my PMS phase yes. or I just, feel, it has been revolutionary for me in a way Absolutely. I can't even explain to yeah. you. And I'll tell you in my next question why also <laughs> it really shifted the way that I engage with myself. Yes. So to just backtrack, yeah. just take us through the feminine cycle, what it looks like, what kind of emotions come up, just the biology of it. Yeah. So firstly, I think the, the starting point, I always say it's day one. Day one is the first day of your period. Yeah. Um, and I often say shy away from saying a monthly period because a woman who's got a short cycle, a 21-day cycle, some months she will have a cycle more than once. Yeah. So it's, it's less important, um, you know, you know, people will be like, I need to go on my period on the 15th. And I'm like, no, months are, are not all 30 days and you would have to have a rigid 30, 31-day cycle. So rather, first day is the first day of your period. Anything between one and seven days is normal for you to go on your on your on your period. So that that means you're bleeding. But you continue counting. So if day one is the period, generally around the period, I call it sort of like the recovery phase. The yeah. recovery phase, it's the end of the old and the beginning of the new cycle. Mm. The first half of your cycle is generally marked with a lot of just you're you're lighter, your your emotions are lighter because of the, the hormone estrogen. Um and, and you are also from a sexual perspective you are more uh, forthcoming you mm. you you know you you're also very i call it giving you you it's easier to give of yourself um, um whether it's in the workplace at home you've just got more capacity mm. you hit about day 15 that is the peak of your call it excitement but that's because at that time you have peaked uh, peak estrogen but also that's when you are releasing an egg um, I, I wish we could look at it from a positive perspective. The way our bodies are structured as women in our reproductive phase is that the body is constantly trying to prepare for a pregnancy. Yeah. Every month, it is literally preparing for a pregnancy. So much so that actually a period is nothing more than just okay, we didn't fall pregnant. It's supposed to be the early stages or the early food for a fetus should somebody fall pregnant. Yeah. When you don't, it's like it just loses that blanket and it'll start over to build another one. So it's deep, but not that deep. You no, know, in terms yeah, of <laughs> absolutely. It's totally understandable. Right. Um, now, in fact, when you think about it, once you've released the egg, the most important thing must happen. Let's assume you're trying to fall pregnant. That's the time where the egg and the sperm must meet, fertilize. But that's also the, one of the most, um, call it, um, fragile parts or fragile parts of baby formation. Yeah. And so that's why actually your body, so you, you get a shot of progesterone, you slow down. If you think about PMS and pregnancy, those symptoms are very similar. Mm. The only difference is that the other one ends in a period, yes. the other one ends in nine months later a baby. Yeah. ends in a baby. Um, but it, it basically like your body slows you down. So you are more introverted. You are more into yourself. You don't, anything that makes you want to be out there very often for a lot of women, it irritates them. Mm. And, and I often say, I wish we would look at it from a good side in that your body is doing something amazing, potentially amazing. But even from a work perspective, that's a good time to reflect on what has been happening in the month and a good time to decide on how you're going to start the next month. I always say we must think of ourselves as, as, as Mother Nature. Mm. We have four seasons. And so a tree does not uproot itself during winter and say, I'm going to go, I'm going to chase summer. Yeah. You rather you dig your, your roots deeper and you shed any extra weight, any, you know, the leaves, and you just nourish yourself. And I think that's something as women we don't do very well. If it was up to us, we would be like the men, just, 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 just running constantly. all the time. Yeah. We, 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 we don't function like that and we burn out much easier when we do that. And so the cycle, I often say, it's like an anticipate yourself. If you mm. understand your own cycle, you can anticipate yourself. You can plan around when to plan big occasions. Like, don't plan it around your PMS, yeah. you know, type of thing. Don't plan You're going to kill everyone. <laughs> 
You're going to kill everyone, exactly. literally. You know, um, but also it, it just allows you to, to be kind to yourself. If you're being lazy and it's supposed to be your estrogenic side of things, I mean, there might be other things going on, but you're like, why do I have low energy? Yes. Um, why, why, is my, why is my mood low? Yeah. Um, I, I call it checking in with yourself. There's nothing that I enjoy more than in the morning I'm like, how are you feeling today? Mm. How are we doing today? Mm. What are we doing today? Okay. I think we... And, and sometimes you have to kind of prep yourself up if you don't feel like it, but there's important things that need to be done because it's not always just, you know, yeah. that, that, that simple. Um, but also when you understand why, like you were saying, I, I know why I'm low, so I'm not going to take that energy to wherever I need to go because I understand. I had to teach it to my daughter as well, and I bought her a, 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 thingy, a trampoline, and I was like, I'll jump on the trampoline 20 times the endorphins will come and you'll <laughs> feel better and it saved me from a lot of 12 year old moods yes a drama um, yeah i absolutely i have to tell you and i'm repeating this and i know i mentioned it in my chemistry call even yesterday yeah. i am a, a astrologically a, a cancerian and one of the big signals for cancerian is often <laughs> that we're moody and i think um what what those you know terms and languages and and descriptions of, of, of people often leave them in a very negative space, mm -hmm. you know, and in a very, in, in a way, in, in a way where they are less compassionate about themselves. I mean, yeah. I know for myself growing up, that was one of the labels that was associated with my astrological positioning. Yeah. And in, in, in saying that this has freed me, I cannot, um, I cannot deep dive enough into how compassionate I have become in understanding mm -hmm. what is happening in my body. Mm -hmm. And I think the thing about astrology is that, you know, it's so closely connected to how the moon behaves and how the moon behaves is so closely connected to, to how cycle. our cycle behaves. Yeah. And more than anything, that has now made me feel even more powerful around yes. how I'm positioned astrologically because I know how much feminine energy runs yeah. through me and yeah. therefore the power that I can bring into any space because I have no doubts about how powerful feminine energy is. Yeah. And what I want to know from you is in navigating this conversation and having it repeatedly, yeah. what have you seen to be the difference in women when they better understand what is happening with them in how they show up for themselves, how they show up for their families, for their relationships, for work as well, because I can't imagine how many women come into your practice yeah. and they have all these emotions that they can't really place somewhere. When you do explain these concepts, what kind yeah. of change do you see in them? Oh, first, it's that aha moment. Yeah. Um, and and I, think, I think we all kind of go through it in our heads. Like, am I going crazy? Am I going crazy? Yeah. Um, and, and so when we do go into the conversation, first of all, it's, 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 there's almost like a relief. Yes. Oh, okay, I'm normal. Yes. I'm actually okay. Um, I have the saying, you know, at the project, the girls are okay. Yeah. You know, we, we, in fact, probably all of us just want to be okay. Um, and that's the first thing. But secondly... You cannot love what you despise. You cannot, you cannot be kind to what you don't understand. Um, and, and, and so the closer we get to understanding ourselves, the more magical we realize we are. But also it allows us to have a kindness for the next person, yes. for the next woman. I think that is something that we are lacking. And, and I, I'm not saying we are lacking for a lack of trying. I think just the, the information hasn't, it, 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 it's coming. It's, mm. it's a ripple effect. Um, I cannot be kind to you if I've never known how to be kind to, to myself. myself. Um, and it'll just be very pretentious. Uh, and, and so not only for themselves, but for the people that you live with. Um, there is a beautiful saying, and I think it is in the Bible, live with understanding with one another. If I know you're a Cancerian and I'm a Pisces, I know it's going down yes. during PMS. Yes, yes. During PMS. It's all the water <laughs> and every, all those movements. We just have to approach it like, okay, how are you feeling today? <laughs> you know? And it's so funny. My best friend is actually a Pisces. Oh, my gosh. No, no, no. I've got a, a bestie who's a, who's a Cancerian. <laughs> I know during PMS, bring all the things that make her feel comfortable. Yes. And even, even not, even like a privacy, that's also something that she, 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 yes. she will want. Yes. She wants longer hugs. And, and, and so when you can articulate to your family, this is what mom is going through. This is what wifey is going through. This is what bae is going through. 
and, and being able to say, so I teach my, my peoples, um, ask me what I need. Yeah. During those times, what do you need? Yes. Because I need to be able to articulate. There's none of this nonsense that, you know, we must just be like telepathic mm. and I mm. must just figure out what, what's going on. People actually don't understand each other as much as we often want to give credit to. Yeah. Say and, and, and asking for what you want is one of the most powerful things. I would like a cup of coffee. Mm. I would like some silence. I would like to take a walk. I would like a hug. I would like whatever it is. It empowers you. And especially when you have someone who is willing to serve you. Yeah. Um, so for me, being able to serve one another, being able to um, teach our families, teach the men that we, we, we live with as well. Because I think it's a, it's, a, it's a crime to honestly believe that men are uninterested, they are trash, and, and I have met some of the most beautiful men in my life. Yes. And all they want is just to understand. Yes. Just say it out loud. And yes. they want it in plain, you know, language. Just English. Just yeah. tell me in plain English. You know, what do you mood. need me to do? What do you need me to yeah. do? Yeah. 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 That's true. I have to say I've also been quite fortunate in, um, you know, encountering and having those experiences with uh, men who are really willing to, to listen and better understand how they can also engage with the world. Do you think the workplace is ready for this conversation? Yes. Okay. I, I, think, I think it is not just time, but we... I look at someone like you and I. Mm. One of the things that people um, may take for granted is the amount of internal work that has to happen. So it's not like we just wake up one day and go and bang at some offices and like we want space. Yes. No. There is a lot of a lot of women are doing so much internal intentional work that will never allow themselves to show up as anything else but themselves. themselves. And so even as I approach a job interview and a, any interview, the more myself I feel, the better quality I will give whoever is sitting on the other side. Mm. And so when I say the, the workspace, whether they know it or not, is ready and not only ready, it needs to be ready because they will get so much more out of a woman if they let her come from who she is. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. I never even thought about it that way, that it might not even come from the top. It might just come from, you know, the, the discomfort and resistance that people start to have because yeah. they have such a deep knowledge and understanding of themselves yeah. that they are unable really to exist in spaces that don't yeah. meet them where they are. A lot of women will walk if a job prescription does not because here's the thing as well i think we're also moving away from this thing of uh, we must just work 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 me no i want to work hard be diligent with excellence but i also want to recover and holiday with excellence i love that you know i and, love that and and and, and so all these things are important to me. My career is important, but my daughter is important. Yes. But my relationship is important. Yes. But my sacred space with myself is important. My playtime is important. My gym is important. Mm. And I was like, yes, I want it. And mm. I want it all. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and I'm willing to put in the work to give myself, at least over time, Everything that I believe makes me happy. Mm. I think the big word, even from our conference, we had a sexual health conference. The big buzz is no longer this hustle, do this, yes. climb on this, do that. It's club 5 a.m. or 5 a.m. club or whatever. I always say, you know, and, and, and the reason that this podcast is called Working Smart and Living Well is because I think the ideal life is finding harmony between these two places. Yeah. Because for someone like me, I thrive in my excellence. You know, yeah. I, I'm fulfilled by my work. I love showing up and showing up, showing up in a beautiful way and boldly. But I equally like my isolation. You yes. know, I love my Sundays. Yes. I love, I, I literally have made this, a decision 
to not engage with anyone on Sundays yeah. unless I really, really, really want to engage with you. Yeah. And I believe you can point to me. Yeah. My Sundays are sacred and they're off limits. Yeah. You can't call me into a meeting on Sunday. You can't make me do <laughs> anything, make do anything. on a Sunday yeah. because I've chosen that day as my time to recover. Yeah to think through what I want um, the, the week to look like, yes. to reflect on the past week. Yeah. Because if you don't intentionally make those decisions, the world will continue to ask of you. Yes, and con and it, it will be your children, it will be your employees, it will be your work, it will be your partner. If you're not intentional, you will yeah. never, ever stop. Yeah. And it takes a lot of vulnerability to, to do that. Mm. You know, I have to sometimes walk into the office and say, Annette, I'm not okay today. Um, I know so-and-so is urgent. I will see them. But please uh, book off the rest of the, of the, of the day. Mm. It, it's, it's also that thing of what do you treasure? Because you do get people who will mill through whatever, whether physical, emotional discomfort, um, maybe for financial gain. Yes. Me, you can't pay me enough to... to I say work. that as well. I <laughs> like, always I'm just say like, that. I'm happy to have just enough, yes. you know, yes. and live well. To live my ideal life. Yeah. I don't need all the money in the world. No. I just need the money that is going to accommodate my basic needs. Yeah. Often, it is the basic needs. And then everything else is wealth and it's an extra. Yeah. But with just enough, you can live a beautiful yeah. life. What is the one ritual you would advise every woman to cultivate in order to live their best life within this feminine energy? Check in with yourself. Mm. You have to check in with yourself. Um, the, the, the problem with not checking with yourself is very often you start thinking the problem is out there or the difficulties are out there or the, the strain and the strife comes from out there. Yeah. No such. Everything is, it starts within, mm. you know, um, and, and, and so not only, you know, I say check in because you can be self-aware, but sometimes you are self-aware, but you're not accountable. Yes. You know, so you, when I say check in, you have to ask, how am I doing? And mm. how am I, okay, I'm feeling this way. How am I going to approach what is ahead of me? Yeah. Um, how do I approach so-and-so with that issue that we're dealing with? Mm. Um, and, and, and once you've solved for self, oh man, it's, it's not that life is easy, but, but, but you go through it lighter. Yeah. I, I find that I go through it lighter. And, and one of my favorite things is to check in whilst I'm at, because um, I, I quickly learned that doing some kind of movement exercise in the morning works for me. Yeah. I, I'm generally not a morning person. Mm. But if I get it right, um, I, I can do so much more in the morning. And, and I always say, I can buy myself an afternoon off. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, so check. Check in with yourself. Check in deep and wide yeah. with yourself. Whether it's work issues, whether it's family issues, whether it's your internal. A lot of us don't even ask ourselves, where am I in my journey? Mm. Where, where am I in my journey? And to recognize the season you are in so that you are not distracted by everyone else's season. I absolutely, absolutely love everything that you just said. But I want to know, how do you work smart? Probably the most unorthodox answer, I love. Mm. I love my work. Um, I love what I do. I, I love my clients. I, uh, a friend of mine said to me, the problem with you is you yourself, both at work and... Yes, you are. Everywhere. <laughs> you're everywhere. Same, everywhere. You show up as, as, as Bume. And, and it makes it easy. That, for me, that is smart because that is my strength. Um, and, and when I operate from my strength, it makes the hard days better. Mm. Because some days are difficult. The hours are long. Um, sometimes I really want to just be with my daughter. And, and so to, to love what I do... Um, to love myself um, is, is how I, I work smart. I, I have to constantly be accountable in being organized and planning. That's not my strength. Yeah. And so I always have to surround myself with people who are better at that mm. for me. Um, but also just like every now and again, girl, you need to get that paperwork sorted and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, uh, um, 
but my, my absolute strength is I love. Yeah. I really, really love what I do. And, and once I walk into that office, it's just like, okay. I feel it every time I see your videos at the office, <laughs> even when I uh, did that video call with you. Yes. Just the, the energy and, and how you've also curated the space yeah. is such a demonstration of your love for everything, yeah. I think, that you do and touch. And my final question to you is, how do you live well? <sighs> the, probably the biggest thing I've had to learn that has allowed me to live well is to speak up. Yeah. Speak up about, speak up in terms of who I am, in terms of what I would like. Um, you know, the, there's something about, you know, the truth doesn't always have to be, in fact, it never has to be brutal. Yeah. The, the truth should always be gracious. Mm. Um, and one of the truths I had to embrace for myself is you need to grow that spine a little bit tougher mm. to stand up so that you can show forth as as truly you yeah. not not a a washed down version because you're trying to please someone else or um because you're feeling sorry or you feel i needed to be honest with myself and say speak up yeah show 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 up and show out what's the worst that can happen? Mm. And it's been the most beautiful thing. Um, my sisters call me queen of pleasure. I love pleasure. Yeah. Like pleasure in all its glory. Yeah. Um, and, and so I would say it, it's that honesty to, to be myself. Mm. Um, but, but also I, lo I love pleasure. And I love it when I, when I feel like I've earned it. Yes. Yeah, for me, that, that is living well. But me, I, I can't... I can't express enough how your voice is needed in this time, yeah. how important it is, how you are built for everything that you do, <laughs> uh, the joy that you, you, you carry with you and um, the energy you bring into any space is, I think, the thing that is most memorable about your presence. Yeah. You make people feel good. Oh, you make like people that. feel good. You make people feel excited about living fully yeah. in, 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 in who they are. And um, I, I appreciate every conversation I've had with you. Mm. If each and every one of them has been, it's shifted the needle for me, you know. And I think one of the things that I've really loved about creating this podcast is exposing the entire world to people like you. I've been yeah. so fortunate, so, so fortunate <laughs> to meet amazing Thank people you. who have shaped who I have become. And yeah. you definitely are a, a part of that list. And I really appreciate you, oh. your time and all the work that you do. Oh man, you're doing an incredible work. Thank you. Thank you to your peoples, guys. You guys are absolutely fantastic. And, and, and I hope, you know, I think this is the, you know, when we met, 2019 it's those people who make your own baby kick in your in your stomach um and and you've always been one of those people and and i wish you wealth love and absolute splendid joy thank you thank you i appreciate it so much Thank you for watching today's episode. Make sure to switch on the notification bell, like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch the full audio version of this podcast at 5 a.m. on Tuesday on all podcast platforms. Finally, if you want to be featured on our Instagram page or website, comment below with a nugget that was insightful for you in this conversation.